first job that I got, it was at McDonald's. And when I was working there when I was younger, you know, in the beginning, everybody seen me, I was cool and I was nice. But one thing I didn't like was that sometimes the workers were not being respected. And sometimes management didn't respect the workers either. The first thing I tried to do was to settle everything by going to a meeting and talking. And I, I did that the first time, but the second time I was offended by our new store manager, I went in there and I was in there and I had the store owner be in there too because I didn't want anyone to gang up on me during any more meetings. I am just a person who gets overworked sometimes. I'm a person who's underappreciated at times. And those are the things that I would like to see change in our community. I would have to say that my experience was uh, through a fast food chain. I had um, been promised a certain wage and they didn't follow through with that. They gave me less than what they had promised me. They ended up giving me less and less hours as the time went on to where I wasn't able to survive. Um, had to get other jobs besides that one because of the fact that I, I was on DSS, I was on social services, and they had taken away the, the lumps lump sum of my help because of the fact that I had the job but then when they had when they had uh, lowered my hours DSS wasn't compensating for that. I went into a home health agency because I'm used to the work that's the kind of work that I used to do prior to becoming a social worker. When I went to this agency I was just listening to the way that they were treating these are people that don't don't even work for me yet and they were already talking about, oh, you won't be paid for this training. You won't be given any hours until you complete this. Just really being a bully about everything. What they had us sign the first day we came to class was that we will not look for any other employment or we will owe them $500. And that that was a probationary period within 90 days. So we couldn't see any other work for 90 days unless we'll be fined $500. We are a community-based worker center where workers join together to defend and expand their rights and to build power. We link workers' immediate needs for help with workplace injustices to organizing and participatory membership in the worker center. Through advocacy, leadership development, and political education, we empower and mobilize workers to expose exploitation and win improvements. In addition to uh, the uh, very high level of poverty, we still in this community um, suffer from an almost institutionalized system of racial apartheid. The pockets of segregation and exploitation along uh, racial lines are, are very clear and very detrimental and very harmful not only to persons of color, but to the community as a whole. Worker centers are another way of having an option to address um, these issues and to uh, teach every day in very concrete forms that we are all stronger and better united. I believe that having a worker center will allow other people to speak up where they will not speak. I feel like having a worker center is an opportunity for everyone to have rights who don't have a membership in a union. I think knowing that I had found somebody that was willing to help me and figure out what was right or wrong really empowered my situation. You know, I was able to feel better about myself and realize that what they were doing was totally wrong. Well, we have to find ways to organize workers um, to reestablish real participation in this country, both in the political realm and in the economic realm. If we don't, we're going to live in a feudal society governed by a series of kings that are on the Forbes Fortune, Forbes and Fortune 500 list. The workers, a lot of them who make it to our doors are often the fiercest leaders at their workplace. They've already spoken out on their jobs about certain injustices. They've already been retaliated against, so they know what it's like to kind of take risks. They've talked to their coworkers about the problem, and a lot of them have already done, engaged in direct action, even though they wouldn't call it that. And so I think it's really humbling to know that workers are organizing with or without us. And I think it's really on the community to get 
to catch up and really create a space that supports building their power and supports like the intuitive organizing that's already happening. Massive job creating projects in alternative energy forms, in mass transportation, in neighborhood clinics which could be sited in a variety of locations. What I would like to see is I would like to see that wherever you work you have uh, a contract, you have rights on the job, you have a grievance procedure. Get justice for workers that have been disenfranchised and um, let go. Workers really building power in really real ways that are producing shifts in the workplace, in our neighborhoods, in the economy, um, to create living wage jobs, jobs that have benefits. To bring justice for the people who don't know their rights, people who aren't able to fight the big companies without just getting fired and, and brushed under a rug. To create a larger sense of community in Rochester. We can't do this without you. We're really excited about this project because we've worked really hard to make this vision come true and we really value your support. So if you would like to contribute in any kind of way, by going to your change jar and picking up a couple of nickels, or if you're a millionaire, <laughs> donate a little bit of cash. We love all the support that we can get or even standing with us. Thanks, Thanks for your support. support. go get the hook up. So what could a Workers Justice Center do for me? What can it personally do for me? And I know a lot of y'all are skeptical, but honestly, I feel like you should give it a shot. What do you have to lose? Go power.